good morning dear students welcome to grade 7 this is the first session of your science class and today we'll start with the first chapter of science that is nutrition in plants so our chapter is divided into two main sub topics that is mode of nutrition in plants and replenishment of nutrients in the soil in modes of nutrition in plants we'll see how what are the different ways in which plant gets nutrition and in replenishment of nutrients in the soil we'll see the different way different ways how plant how soil gets its nutrients back we know that plant obtains majority of nutrients from the soil so how soil gets its nutrients back that we'll see in replenishment of nutrients in the soil so let's begin so as the name of the chapter is nutrition in plants so we must know what is nutrition so nutrition is the process of taking food that is nutrients by an organism and its digestion absorption and utilization by the body so the process by which an organism takes food and utilizes that food either to get energy or for growth and development this process is called nutrition now you must know what are nutrients so nutrients the different components of food like carbohydrates proteins fats vitamin and minerals are called nutrients so when you we take in food so the different components which are present in the food like carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals these are called nutrients and different components have different uses for our body some are replaced for energy and some are replaced for growth and development some some nutrients gives us immunity also against different disease so nutrients are necessary for organisms as it helps the organisms in growth and development to repair damaged part of their bodies and provide the energy to carry out life processes so nutrients are necessary as it uh, as it gives energy to our body and it helps in carrying out various life processes in our body that is why taking different nutrients is very necessary so there are two different ways in which an organism gets nutrition so the, there are two different modes we can say by which organism gets nutrition first is autotrophic nutrition and second is heterotrophic nutrition so we'll study both of them one by one what is autotrophic mode of nutrition and what is heterotrophic mode of nutrition and how they are different from each other so first comes this autotrophic mode of nutrition we know plants can prepare their food with the help of sunlight so the organisms which can prepare their own food with the help of sunlight they are called autotrophs and this mode of nutrition is called autotrophic mode of nutrition so the mode of nutrition in which an organism makes its own food from simple substances like carbon dioxide water and minerals present in the surrounding is called autotrophic nutrition so the organisms which can prepare their food from simple substances like carbon dioxide water and minerals so from these three things an organisms can prepare their own food so they are called autotrophic organisms so the examples of autotrophic organisms are green plants and some bacteria green plants and some bacteria are the examples of autotrophic organisms they means they can prepare their own food majority of bacteria are heterotrophic but some bacteria are autotrophic as well so if we can break the term autotrophic so autotrophic is made up of two term auto and trophos so auto means self and trophos means nourishment so self nourishment the organisms which can provide nourishment to themselves which can make their own food are called autotrophic organisms so auto means self and trophos means nourishment plants are autotrophic we know plants are autotrophic because they can prepare their own food by using water carbon dioxide and minerals so they can prepare their own food by using water carbon dioxide and minerals from these three things in plants the green pigment called chlorophyll very important collect simple substances like water and salts from the soil and carbon dioxide from air and using sunlight as a source of energy convert the simple substances into complex food for the plant this process is called photosynthesis so what happens is in plants a green pigment called chlorophyll is present very important because of the presence of this green pigment chlorophyll plant can synthesize their own food we cannot synthesize our own food many organisms cannot synthesize their own food because they do not have chlorophyll because of the presence of chlorophyll in the plants they can make their own food so what happens is chlorophyll traps the sunlight and converts carbon dioxide water into complex food which is the carbohydrate so this is how plants prepare their food with the help of photosynthesis this process is called photosynthesis like as you can see in this figure with the help of sunlight carbon dioxide and from with the help of water 
what ha what is happening plant is synthesizing its own food now we will study the process of photosynthesis in bit detail so photosynthesis food making process in plants so photosynthesis synthesis is the food making process because with the help of photosynthesis plants synthesize their food so it's a food making process in the plants the word photosynthesis is derived from two words photo meaning light and synthesis means to combine so photosynthesis is made of two words photo means light and synthesis means to combine means combining in the presence of light so what happens in photosynthesis the carbon dioxide and water combines in the presence of light that is sunlight and it results in the formation of food so this this happens in photosynthesis so photo means light and synthesis means to combine combining in the presence of light leaves are the food factories of the plant so we know that leaves synthesize food for the plant so they are food factory of the plant the synthesis of food in plants occur in leaves therefore all the raw materials must reach there so as the food is being formed in the leaves so all the raw materials means carbon dioxide water minerals must reach the leaves even the sunlight must reach the leaves so how do these things reach the leaves that we have to study now water and minerals present in the soils are absorbed by the roots and transported to the leaves so water and minerals are transported to leaves via root roots transport water and minerals to the leaves as you can see in this figure through roots water and minerals are transported to the leaves so water and minerals are present in the soil and roots absorbs these water and minerals and transport it to the leaves so this is how water and minerals reaches the leaf next how does carbon dioxide enters the leaf very important because carbon dioxide is the main component so how it enters the leaves so carbon dioxide from air is taken through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves so in the leaves there are tiny pores present through which carbon dioxide enters these pores are surrounded by guard cells such pores are called stomata so st uh, in leaves tiny pores called stomata are present through uh, these pores exchange of gases takes place means this uh, from these pores carbon dioxide enters like if you can see this figure uh, in the uh, in the leaf so what happens is in these leaves these tiny pores like structures are present these are called stomata and through these pores carbon dioxide enters like carbon dioxide is entering now these pores are surrounded by these kidney shaped guard cells so when guard cell swells so what happens uh, stomata opens and when stomata opens gas enters and when these guard cells gets closed means guard cell shrinks so stomata ultimately closes so what happens the exchange of gases stops so on opening of stomata stomata exchange of gases takes place and on shrinking of stomata exchange of gases stops <clears throat> the leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll it helps the leaves to capture the energy of the sunlight so what happens is leaf uh, the chlorophyll captures the sunlight this energy is used to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water and sunlight with the help of sunlight food is synthesized with the help of carbon dioxide and water so this is the figure for chlorophyll this these green pigments are called chlorophyll entire process of photosynthesis takes place inside these chlorophyll so during photosynthesis chlorophyll containing cells of leaves in the presence of sunlight use carbon dioxide and water to synthesize carbohydrates so during at the end of photosynthesis food for the plant is being formed and that food is in the form of carbohydrates the carbohydrates get ultimately converted into starch so at the end of photosynthesis carbohydrate that is the food of the plant is formed and that food gets stored in the form of starch so plants store their food in the form of starch and whenever they require energy they can uh, uh, convert that starch again into carbohydrate so if we want to represent the entire process of photosynthesis in the form of word equation in the form of simple equation how can we represent so it shows carbon dioxide plus water means carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and inside the chlorophyll of the leaves results in the formation of glucose glucose is nothing but simplest form of carbohydrate so instead of glucose we can also write carbohydrate so glucose plus oxygen so we know that oxygen is the by product formed during photosynthesis and we utilize oxygen for respiration so very important component oxygen is formed during photosynthesis so this is this equation represents the entire process of photosynthesis that is carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight inside the chlorophyll of the leaf result in the formation of glucose and oxygen so this diagram also represents the process of photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight carbon dioxide and water results in the formation of glucose or carbohydrate inside the chlorophyll of the leaves 
and oxygen is released as the byproduct in the nature and we use this, this car oxygen for respiration. Now one more important thing, we know in desert plants what happens leaves are not present, leaves are converted into thorns, leaves are modified into thorns to So in desert plant, instead, instead of leaves, what happens? Stems uh, conduct the process of photosynthesis. Stems uh, make food for the plant. We know like cactus. Cactus has a green stem. We have already seen, we have all have seen cactus. So cactus has green stem. So this green stem uh, performs the process of photosynthesis instead of leaves because leaves are converted into thorns. Thorns cannot uh, perform photosynthesis. So let us discuss. Besides leaves, photosynthesis also takes place in the green parts of the plant, in green stems and green branches. The desert plants have scales or spine-like leaves to reduce the loss of water by transpiration. So why thorns are present in desert plant? Because in order to avoid transpiration, transpiration is loss of water through leaves. So if leaves are present, a lot of water will be get lost in the nature. So there will be scarcity of water. So plant will not live in desert because already there is scarcity of water. So leaves are modified into thorns. So instead of leaves, the stems are performing photosynthesis. So these plants have green stems which carry out photosynthesis. As you can see this diagram, they, the stems are performing photosynthesis. They, it is absorbing carbon dioxide and water from the atmosphere and performing photosynthesis. Now, one more important thing is synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates. We have all seen that, uh, we have all seen that Carbohydrate is formed as a food during photosynthesis. But what about proteins, fats and other uh, micronutrients? So how do these nutrients are formed in the plants? Because these nutrients are also necessary for growth and development of plants. So we'll study this now. Plants can synthesize components of food other than carbohydrates such as proteins and fat. So plants can synthesize proteins and fat. The carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So we know that formula of glucose is C6H12O6 means carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So these three things, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are present in carbohydrate. And these carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are used for synthesis of other materials. These are used to synthesize other components of food such as proteins and fats. Plants prepare proteins with the help of nitrogen which is obtained from the Soil. So plant prepare. So in order to prepare protein, uh, car, uh, in, in order to prepare protein, nitrogen is also required. Other than carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, nitrogen is also required. So how plants get nitrogen in order to make protein? So plants gets nitrogen from the soil. Soil has certain bacteria that converts gaseous nitrogen into usable form and release it into the soil. So in plants. Special in soil, special bacteria called rhizobium, like rhizobium is present, which convert atmospheric nitrogen into absorbable form, due to which nitrogen gets absorbed in the plant, and plants absorb nitrogen and form protein. Also, you might have seen farmers adding fertilizers rich in nitrogen to the soil. In this way, plants fulfill their requirement of nitrogen along with other constituents. So, what happens is, if bacteria are not present, so uh, plants will not get uh, proper nitrogen, so plant will not make proper protein. So, in order to avoid this, what happens is farmers add fertilizers. Fertilizers are rich in nitrogen. So, with the help of fertilizers, also we can give nitrogen to the plants, and plants can prepare protein and other nutrients. So, this is how plants prepare nutrients other than carbohydrates. So, this finishes our today's session. I hope. You must have understood what I have taught. Thank you for watching.